This is one of the finest examples of an ombrotrophic or rain-fed bog in Vermont. Now because there's not a contact with the rest of the water table, there's no oxygen flowing into this water. This is anoxic, acidic water, and there are only a few specialized kinds of plants that can live in it, and that's the unique habitat that forms this bog. There are a number of unique plants that grow in this habitat, but the one that I've been working on for the past 10 years or so is the carnivorous pitcher plant, Saracenia purpurea. This is actually um, a place that's very difficult for plants to grow. Most plants have roots that they put down into the soil and that's where they get their nutrients from. But this soil is just this waterlogged mat that doesn't have much oxygen in it and it's not a good place for plants to be able to draw up nutrients. But how does a plant live out here if it can't get its nutrients from the soil? Well, what this plant has evolved is a trap to actually catch insect prey. This plant depends on a group of insects that actually live in this aquatic habitat. The base of this food web is the insect prey that are first captured by the plant that die and break down. They're a group of insects, um, mosquito larvae, midge larvae, mites, rotifers that live in this habitat. Some of those are gonna break down or shred that prey up into smaller pieces. Then there's a whole subweb of bacteria that will break it down further that will actually release the nutrients. Now those other animals that live together in this, in this pitcher collectively form an entire food web. Ecologists have been interested in food webs for a long time. They're very hard to study. For one thing, they're huge. Where do we set the limits on a giant food web system? That would be very hard uh, to do. So one of the really attractive things about this system is here we have an entire self-contained food web in a single pitcher. We can actually hold this entire food web in our hand. We can carry out experiments and manipulations that would be impossible to conduct in larger systems. So we can learn things about how food webs are organized that would be very difficult to do in a rigorous way in a larger, more typical ecosystem.